I do not like the season, and I'm not going to hide that I don't like the season. I'm not going to get polemical. I'm going to try to be as fair-minded as possible, but I'd have to say overall, this is probably one of the weakest Buffy seasons since season one. It's not fair to compare season one to the other seasons because, again, it's not a full season, so we got to be careful there. Season four, by many people, is considered really, really terrible, but I defend it. I think, actually, at least half that season is really solid. Adam makes a lot of sense. I wish he was a little bit more active in places, but it has so many good things there. The Faith episodes, the Spike episodes, and when Adam is sort of in his groove, I think it's really fascinating. And believe me, there's a lot of parts of season four I dislike intensely. I dislike it intensely aesthetically, politically, ethically, spiritually. There's so much stuff in season four which is just disgusting and stupid and just revolting. But judging it fairly, there is a lot of good stuff. I can't say that about season six. Overall, as a season... This doesn't have the saving graces. There are a couple of great episodes. In fact, this is probably one of the weakest Buffy seasons, but paradoxically, it has some of the best episodes of all of Buffy's run. So in that respect, it's an interesting experiment to go through. But overall, normal standards, is this season good or bad? It's bad. It's not good. It's below average. But Buffy is never terrible. So even like the bad episodes are you know, fairly good in their own terms. But if this were not Buffy and you were not a fan, you'd sort of be like, I don't get it. What's the big deal? It's it's nicely done. The special effects are good. The cinematography is excellent. It looks great. And some of the acting is solid. But otherwise, you'd be like, this is kind of very ho-hum and plain. Like, I don't understand. This is Buffy the Vampire. So what's the big deal here? And yeah, you'd have to agree that the skeptic is like, there's really not much here. There's a couple of great standout episodes, which we all know what they are. But I'll go through this for the novice. Once more with feeling, a musical episode. Normal again. Easily one of the best episodes in television history, period. Just one of the best scripts I've ever gone through. One of the best directed Buffy episodes. It's really amazing. Normal, again, by itself, almost saves the season. But it quite doesn't. Because even the other strong episodes like Gone or Seeing Red. And I like some of these actors and I like some of these writers. Like Stephen S. DeKnight, his work on Angel, he's like a god to me. He's really that good. But even his episodes are kind of subpar here. I mean, really, it's easy to say that Joss Whedon is the best Buffy writer. That's not true. I think his episode in season five, Family, is really, really terrible. It's not well directed or well written. But I have to be honest, like really until he shows up, you have to wait six episodes to get to one genuinely great episode. And that is horrific. That is a bad Buffy record. I mean, usually you have one or two filler episodes that kind of stall the main story. It takes them like six episodes to finally really get going, and that is really way too long, even for Buffy. So the central idea of the season essentially is now Buffy will have human antagonists. And to be fair, it is consistent at the end, because even you think, well, is that person human? Technically, yes. So if her opponent this season is human or humans. But when they do the twist, I was like, okay, I've read comic books. I know the X-Men comic books. You're just stealing that idea, so I'm not very impressed. But even the trio all to themselves, I just couldn't buy it. The logic was way too screwy. I mean, Jonathan is just too nice a person. Why he would be fooled by Warren is beyond me. It just does not make any sense. It does not make any sense. Andrew, I understand he loves Warren, is persuaded, gaslighted. And I understand gaslighting is the central theme of the whole season, but just the way they handle it, I think, is frankly childish and disrespectful to the audience's intelligence. I just don't think Spike would act this way. I don't think Willow would act this way. I don't think Buffy would act this way. People are just, they're not acting in the way the characters really have been shown to be acting. And it's just frustrating because even the good episodes, you're like, you got to hand wave too many things. You have to be like the logical problems, the editing problems, the continuity problems, the retcons. It's like, I will give Noxon one thing. I do think she was just not a good showrunner and this really exemplifies this. Now I'm on record. She did the best Buffy season, season five. So she has, she is capable of doing great work, but this is really terrible. This is just not up to what Buffy should be. But I will give her this, that because of various things with them moving to UPN, it was good in terms of budgets and getting more material, getting better cameras and all those kinds of things. But one big thing is they don't have access to the Angel verse. They were denied Angel and a lot of the characters like Fred, Gunn and Wesley and Cordelia. And so that really showing that lack of that connective tissue that they had with the earlier seasons with the Angel verse really stands out. I mean, no spoiler here, Buffy comes back. She's dead, and she comes back. That's going to have an impact on people like Angel, Gunn, Wesley, and Fred, because they're like, yeah, she's dead, now she's back. Like, they're not going to even show up at Sunnydale for one day to sort of reassess, well, what's going on here? Or when, quote, another apocalyptic threat happens, that's just not normal. That's not in character. That doesn't make any sense. Like, Angel shows up when there's just a small tragedy. Clearly, he would show up now. I mean, she was dead. 
that makes no sense at all. But I understand in terms of production issues, they just couldn't do that. So I will grant her that, that being denied the angel verse in any deep sense really hampered the stories. I, I would grant that. But I think even legitimately, even being denied angel in a lot of the stories there, this is still not very good. This is really not good on its own terms. It's not good in terms of its themes. It's way too childish. The twists when they happen, for the most part, are really too radical and really last minute and just feels not well structured at all. But I would say the spike conclusion, which happens at the very, very end, is very satisfying. They do pay it off in season seven. And I do think season seven does redeem a lot of the features here because they are setting things up for the future season. But boy, a lot of stuff is not going anywhere, not making a lot of sense. It's just seems like an act in futility to find the good stuff here because it is just genuinely not up to the usual Buffy standard. And I'm much more of an Angel Firefly fan, but I always legitimately try to give Buffy its best chance. Even when I don't like the episodes, I don't like where it's going. I don't like the season, but this is aggressively like the best case to just beat it down to a pulp because it is really aggressively stupid at points. And you're like, why are they doing this? Why? Why are they doing this? This is not going anywhere. Cut it off. Do something. Get different people. <sighs> and it's saying something. And I don't hate Riley, but when the Riley episode is one of the good episodes, that's not good. So season six, aggressively mediocre. I'm going to be forced to give it a 6.5. If you think the production issues with UPN legitimately, you know, we should allow for that for the Angelverse issue. I agree. Then maybe it should be a 7 out of 10. But honestly, it does deserve a 6.5. You should still go through it. Some great episodes they're worth waiting for. But otherwise than that, there's not much good to say about this, unfortunately. All right. This has been a non-spoiler review of season six of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Thanks for listening.